Welcome to another episode of Hard Headed Podcast. We are at episode 201. The musical the loud. loud in my earphones anyway. Well, it's loud in our ears. It, it it'll be a little softer on the maybe on the maybe not. Back. We're going live. This is live. This isn't a pre-recorded intro. That's right. Breaking Let's speakers. So I'm here with my good friends Matt Amos and Chet Sears, and I'm Troy Trussell. We are bringing you the Hard Headed Podcast today. We are going to talk about things we don't get. This world is messed up. Back by popular demand. Things we just don't get. We don't get it. But leading into that, or after that, we're going to talk about the three favorite books of the Bible, our top three favorite books of the Bible each, and then Chet's going to end it with a good word. So we're just going to jump right in. I know last week's episode was a little long, so we'll see how this one goes. It might be another hour. Who knows? All right. There's a bunch of crap we don't get. I got, I got one right out of the gate. These people that are spending like ten and twenty thousand dollars on fishing kayaks. <laughs> have you seen these? No, I, that's, uh, that's I have not ridiculous. seen a fishing kayak for twenty grand. Yeah, oh my gosh. There got, is a subculture out there. There's so many more things I'm I would talking spend twenty grand on. I'm talking uh live scope electronics, motorized fishing kayaks. They have like coolers strapped to them and rod holders, like dual antennas whipping in the wind, but there's like six rods hanging off the back of these things. It's just a kayak. You just sit in it and paddle I'm down the river. I'm telling you. Well, they ain't paddling no more. It's motorized. It's mo- it's ridiculous the amount of money. That's like spending $10,000 on a pair of running shoes. It's like a kayak is not a fishing platform. Yeah. And I... I've got no problem with somebody taking a $200 kayak from Academy and going out there and doing some fishing. That's not what this is about. What I don't get is why are you going to spend more money than a used bass boat on a kayak. And this is a kayak. You have to have a trailer. Like they're that heavy. You can't like throw it in the back of your truck. Yeah. It's the dumbest thing ever. And then the next thing that, that you know, what does that lead to? You have these fishing jet skis. They have jet skis specifically made for, but you're sitting on a seat the to whole fish. time. Yes, it's ridiculous. It needs to go away. It needs to stop. I don't even understand. I just don't get fishing kayaks. Along those same lines, I don't get forty thousand dollars for a Polaris Ranger. Dude, that uh, go buy an F one fifty. Go buy a truck. Go buy a yeah. truck. Yeah. Hey, you can buy a brand new like Ford Maverick for something like that. It go everywhere that that Ranger will go, and and go a lot longer. Yeah. Wow. Twenty thousand dollars. See do. Yeah. Here, here, here you go. For fishing. That's so stupid. That's oh. that's the dumbest thing in the world. All right. What else? Fishing kayaks. Uh, I'll, I'll, oh, this may offend some people. You may be driving right now in your Jeep. Those ducks, those rubber ducks and Jeeps. I don't get it. Rubber ducks. They the, got yeah. them all over the dash. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. See if you can help me out with this. Okay. What is what is what does the internet say? Why why are there Jeep ducks? ducking. Jeep ducking is a fun and lighthearted tradition among Wrangler owners where they attach rubber ducks to the dashboard. These rubber ducks come in various shapes, sizes, and designs, adding a whimsical touch to the vehicle's appearance. I don't get it. Like, the, I'm telling you right now, if one of those vehicles gets in an accident, there are going to be projectiles of rubber ducks flying all over <laughs> everything. Like, it, it's, it's at a level of, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, what other vehicle owner group thinks that they need to put anything across their dashboard where you can't even see the road? VW Bug. Nope. They're not like that. What they do, they put the flowers. They have the flowers. flowers. But it's just one flower, and it's only in one place. Still the same kind of thing. They put eyelashes on them. Oh, gosh. You know who did that? Your daughter. No. 
<laughs> no. You. No. <laughs> one of the guys, uh, one of the youth leaders at church did that. I know. And I, I told him I'm, I'm coming after him. <laughs> Have you gotten, you haven't gotten him back yet? No, it, I'm waiting for the right time. But I did have to put new headlights on the car, which is a whole ordeal in it of itself. But complete, And I told him, I was like, Brad, I love you, man. And that was a pretty good prank with the eyelashes deal. But, if you but do it the again. effort I had to go through to put these new headlights on there, you and I are going to have some serious problems if you do. And I, I said, Brad, I'm not joking. Like, <laughs> this isn't a, oh, ha ha, this will really get I Don't. Don't ever touch those headlights. That <laughs> and he's like, okay, chat. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll steal one of your legs. Matt, don't care. I have another. Huh? I have another. I'll shove you down and take one of them legs off. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> good luck. You go to the ground with me, you're in a hole. Hey, 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 right. hey. Getting a duck is basically a show of respect for your car from another Jeep owner. No. Nah. Shake their hand. It's like it's like it's like challenge coins for uh, Jeep owners. But no, the, you got to display them on the dash where they're. It's just that I don't get it. I do not get it. Well, I, it's along the, the same lines. Like my daughter has this uh, has these little animals. Like she she likes the whole Japanese culture thing. And they apparently, if you if you drive around in Japan, they have all these things that they stick on their windshields. And I'm like, she came home one day and she had it like dangling. And I was like, listen, you've already uh, been in a vehicle accident that you caused with a semi you're not having anything dangling from any window where it's going to affect gonna your visibility i was like get that thing off put it somewhere else <laughs> yeah i i'm in agreement with that yeah. kind of philosophy um the uh the, did you notice the i don't know if you the subculture there is that inside of the jeep community like i, I don't own a jeep right so i call them jeeps but because the wrangler owners don't want like a Jeep compass owner to be confused. Like we're not in the same community. We're Wrangler, <laughs> we're Wrangler owners now. It's not Jeeps anymore. It's we're Wrangler owners. So you saw, you read that article, Wrangler owners Wrangler, exchanged us. Yeah. So the only way I got, this just came to me right now. The only way that we're going to get the Wrangler owners to stop putting ducks on all their stuff is to go around to the Jeep Cherokee, Jeep compass, Jeep Patriot owners and start putting ducks in their dash. And then the Jeep Wrangler people are gonna be like, "Oh, it can't have, it can't be the same as the other Jeep owners." That'll stop it. They'll we're, come up with. I'm something on a else. mission. They'll come up with something else. It started out just being a wave, a Jeep wave. Yeah, I'm cool with that. The motorcycle guys do it too, because I don't have to see it in the parking lot. All the 21. Well, you mentioned ducks. the motorcycle thing. That's I don't get that either. Like that's just like what is this thing that they do? Well, they wave. I know, but aren't they, are they like giving a, when you're, like a gang sign When you're riding a motorcycle, you don't want to put your hand up in the open wind stream well, right. and it blow back. So you just wave down. You just, you just put it out down low where the bike's it's breaking the hang. wind. What's up? Yeah. I thought they were always just like What's up? doing some kind of... No, it's, it's, it's the same thing as like going, hey, how are you? But, but you, can't, you, can't here, be, you can't be a biker and go... <laughs> <laughs> but be, I mean, if you're going 70 miles an hour be, down the interstate... Cool. Right, that's gonna blow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the disruptive. But if you're that in the wind, the, you know you already broke the wind down here, so you just put your hand out down there. That makes the, sense. Yeah, so you just yeah. I'm, I acknowledge your presence. Uh, you know, I help you out if if you break down, fellow biker. Yeah, and I'm okay with the jeeps doing that too. You know that that's fine. This this duck thing is taking it to a whole another level. Like stop. It is all about the money. Whoever is selling those ducks started the trend and then made them all that, that it, it comes back to money. It, on all and that it's stuff. shocking that they have money to buy ducks because they have a lot of repairs they have to do on those pieces of junk. I never, I, I, was you don't, you were a Jeep guy. You had a Jeep. I did a Wrangler. I'm sorry. Did you ever have any ducks? I had a Rubicon. Uh, did somebody give you a duck? Have no, you ever been ducked? No. What would you have done? I don't done? even think it was a thing. What would you have done I if somebody ducked you? I definitely would not have a duck. On yeah? Me. I would not do You wouldn't that. stack them up across the dash, Absolutely even not. if it was camouflaged? No. Did the Wrangler sponsor the Chicago Ducky Derby? I don't know. I'm just... Because they dump uh, 70,000 rubber ducks into the Chicago River. Those are a little bit bigger duck than these ducks. Are, I don't know. I don't think they are. I think they're pretty... Diminutive? I don't know what that means. Small. So maybe you could comment yeah. in in the in the 
you know, social media feed on why that's a thing and help me get it. But I don't get it. And, and I could probably get, I'm going to put a duck on your car just to acknowledge you. I don't know. I'm going to be a fan of that, but then you should take that duck and like pass it along. You shouldn't just like hoard them like, <laughs> and, and put them across your dashboard. It's like, it's like pieces of flair. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, what, you don't have enough flair. What movie was that? Is that uh, Office, Office Space? Space? Yeah. yeah. I thought I was wearing the appropriate number, number of flair. Well, that's the minimum. So, oh. so you're telling me I need more. No. no, but if you want to wear more, we highly encourage it. <laughs> so what you're saying is you want me to put more? I love that movie. Check out Bobby over there and his flare. <laughs> and then he does the Jeep wave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that's great. Those, those are the things on my mind that I do not get. You know what I don't get? What? Having, a, having a thousand gallons of baby oil at your house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't get that one Nothing bit. Nothing like a ditty party. Oh, gosh. Man, yeah. That's disgusting. You know what I don't get? I don't get why banks suck so bad. Ooh. In what way? Um, I'm not going to name any banks' names, but years ago, I was at Interest Bank. Yeah. And... uh had an account and then they tried to screw me over with like $10 a month checking. Yeah. So we moved to a smaller bank and then that bank grew and grew and grew over the 12 years we've been with them. And Cause it's, your money, all that money you got flowing in there. That's, yeah. Right. Yeah. But it just started to suck even worse. Yeah. And things started like, they just don't know how to manage accounts well. And so switched again to a smaller bank again. Same thing's going to happen? I don't know. I mean, we'll see how time will tell. But yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm with you there. I just don't get how they do stupid things. One, one of the things I don't get about, so two banks, one of the banks, uh, debit card. Like, okay, it's I need a debit card. I'm opening up an account. Yeah, that'll be like six to ten business days. And then I was at a different bank. I want to open up a debit uh, uh, an account and need a debit card, and they're like, "Okay, be back in three minutes." Yeah, like what? Why does one bank not do? It? They can't make them like they outsource it. I don't know. The and then new another bank, bank was just like, eh, "Yeah, I can do that right now." The new bank we were at, like they just had them. Here you go. Yeah, here's your new debit cards. Yeah, banks have crazy rules too. I don't. Yeah, but. So I guess the theory has been that banks should be as sucky as they want to be is because you're going to have to use them no matter what. But is that getting yeah. to the point where that's not the case? I mean. Oh, it will be. Yeah? Yeah. We don't have any need for banks anymore. What do, you, what do you do? Soon. You keep it all in PayPal? Soon is we, PayPal a bank now? <laughs> Soon we won't need money. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's electronic. It'll be electronic credits. Yes. Yeah. Social credit. Guess who talked about that like two years ago? Me. You did. You did talk about. The I saved credits. that research, by the way. And now I have, as opposed to back then, now I have experience in that country and I see in exactly China. how it works. See, I see it works precisely, yeah. like I I, I well, talked I, about because all money's digital. It's fake. There's no, there's no actual money anymore. Like uh, it's not backed by value, other than faith. Right. Yeah. Like, cause you believe that it's worth this. Yes. And, uh, it, it, yeah, it's crazy to me, but I, so I bank with USAA and, uh, all of my, I bank thought that was an insurance company. No, they're a bank. Oh, um, they have insurance, uh, but, uh, everything it's, it's really convenient for me, uh, because everything is, it's all digital. Like I don't have to go anywhere. Like I can cash my check or deposit my check right from my phone um, into my account, and then it's ready immediately. Um, and uh, they're really good about catching um, fraud and abuse and stuff like that. But yeah. uh, where it's really inconvenient is when um, I get cash from somebody. Yeah. You know, like How I, do you... I, I've gone out and I've done like, uh, you know, 
what a mode or let's let, you know whatever yeah and, yeah and, you're gonna and, go plant somebody's food plot on and, you know their, they, their pay, property. they pay me cash you're like here here's 500 bucks you know and yeah. then i'm like okay it's not 500 bucks where do i go deposit my 500 bucks so i have to deposit it into another account which i have that's a local account so i put it in the bank there and then i write myself a check and then, and then put scan it, it and in then, and then scan it into the savings account yeah. it's it's that whole process is missing. Right. You know, but uh, but we're getting away from cash anyway. They don't want it. Yeah, we got to have it. Like, no matter what, that's we cannot only, get rid of cash. Yeah, that's the only way that you uh, you get you can get around the government. Yeah, they, they, they can control you otherwise. You, yeah, we 100%. saw that in Canada when, when they, they started they, freezing the sudden, bank beep, accounts. They push a button and beep. Yeah, that was yeah. Uh, the whole uh, the trucker the charity uh, thing. Gave out all the names. Uh the Kickstarter, GoFundMe, GoFundMe. But yeah. then the government told the banks to freeze the accounts of everybody that was there, right? And they couldn't access their digital, their money through you through know, their bank. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's jacked up. Yep. And then you have you know peaceful protests like January sixth, and uh, you know they shut your stuff down there. So here's another thing I don't get though: they're still building banks everywhere, and they're huge. Oh yeah. Like every other part of the economy, other than healthcare, has gone down. Banks are on the rise. Yeah, what's up with that? I don't know. Maybe we need to open up our own bank. You know how hard that I've looked into it. You know how hard that is. Golly, it takes a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money. Imagine I, that to open a bank. But. One, <laughs> one of the that's ironic. Other people's money. That's that's how you do it. That's how they do it. You got to yeah. get them to give it to you. So one one of the ways that we've had some decent experience at a couple of local banks is getting to know like one of the managers just through doing business there. Oh, well that's what, that's why I like the small bank. Yeah. So when I, the bank we were at was equity. We, it was right by our house. I was going to depositing checks once or twice a week. Yeah. Through my business and uh, got to know the general manager or the, yeah, that, the manager, that location, branch manager. Branch whatever, manager. Yeah. yeah, really well. She was there like three years. Had a great relationship with her. She always, if there was an issue, she always fixed it right away. Yeah. They never held checks. Like, yeah. yeah. Then she moved on up, moved up the ranks, and all the teller, everybody, they just got moved up the ranks and left. And then it all went to crap. Yeah, I mean, it, it took time for it to go to crap because I think we were with them for... Yeah, oh, 10 years, 10 or 11 yeah. years. But they, uh, so just recently, actually, they merged with somebody. And I think that's what jump-started the growth. Yeah. Because we, uh, we had a patient that uh, was one of their branch managers. Uh, like region managers, like all the western Kansas. And uh, I remember when they merged. I remember when that happened. Yeah. When that happened. You well, don't remember that lunch that we had? I do remember that lunch. Yeah. Very well. Yeah, it just got too big, and they forget about the little guys. Yep, have issues, and then they don't take care of the issues. Yeah. So, back no to doubt. that. Back to smaller bank banking, or a large bank with a community feel. Uh, one one of the banks that we do business with now, one of the reasons that I do business with them, or allow, I was like, yeah, that'd be okay. Um, is right now on the corner of our, of our intersection, the main intersection on Mays road. They, oh, have, yeah. the, the, they have that big led sign. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? And the daylight night time switch was malfunctioning apparently. And it was like Vegas. Like it, it was so oh, bright. Yeah. You couldn't, it was hard to see the traffic light cause the sign was so bright after, after dark. And I found that they had a, an X account back when it was Twitter. And I was like, hey, at, you know, this bank, uh, you think you could turn down your sign? You, you know, it's a driving hazard here. I didn't want to, I don't want to have the Las Vegas feel in Wichita. And I had a picture of, and it was just like, you know, that's like you're taking a picture of the sun <laughs> with the glow and, and all that. And I, within like 30 minutes, we apologize for this. We've contacted the manufacturer of the sign maker. We under, we understand that there's been a, you know, the such and such thing is broken. We'll have this fixed shortly. I was like, oh, that's pretty awesome. You know, I was just trying to make a joke about Las Vegas, Wichita, bright lights. And 
they're like responsive. And yeah, a couple of years later, we have an account there. Did they they fix it right away? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it it took a couple of days, but, but yeah, they got. I remember it. when yeah. that sign was like that, dude. It yeah, was I bright. Too. Yeah, it was bright. But uh, yeah. So bad customer service at banks. Anything else? You guys get everything else in the world? Uh, no, I don't get uh, how all these people are uh, crying out against uh, Hamas, uh, like s- supporting uh, Palestine and doing all this stuff. And then you've got Hamas who's actually coming in and like beating Palestinians and Israelis. Are you going to support that? Or there was somebody that get, literally, I- they're beating this dude to death. Like it's a very gruesome video. Uh, where they basically have clubs and they break this dude's legs and break his arms and then basically shoot him, but not before beating him to death, basically. And it's like, these are the people that you're defending. Like, they're... The, the Palestinians elected Hamas leaders and they're to beating, run their and, government. And they're beating them to death. I mean... And you have people that are defend, defending that. It's like, come on, bro. I don't get it. Uh, I don't. I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't get. I mentioned it uh, last yeah. episode. I do not get people on threads. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Taking your picture. I don't authorize that. Hmm? <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't get people on threads. Uh, I don't get that. Uh, for whatever reason, Democrats seem to be uh, more emotional voters than logical voters. Yeah, uh, no doubt, hundred percent there. Why did you even download Threads? That's I things wanted, I don't get. I wanted. Why to be are you the, going to get more social media? I wanted to be a light in the darkness. Are you that bored? I <laughs> yes, mean, yes. how many options do you have right now? There's, there's a. Uh, X, there's Facebook, there's Instagram. There are you on t- the TikTok? No. Are you on Snapchat? No. So what else? Threads. I have Facebook, which automatically goes to Instagram if I post anything. So I really don't pay attention to Instagram at all. Uh, threads, and I really don't follow X unless you send me something. Yeah. Okay. I really don't spend a whole lot of time on. All right. Media. Why? What? What possessed you to go Threads? I saw it because it, it, it pops up on Facebook. Yeah. Like you'd be scrolling through and then there's like some comment and you're like, Oh, I want to see that. I want to see And then more. it's like, takes you to threads. And then it, takes it happens me to, to me threads. all the time. And I'm like, no back. I don't want to. And do then threads. I look at that. I'm like, and then I start reading. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I feel so bad for these people. Like they're mentally deficient and maybe I can help them understand the world a little bit better. Uh, because one of the big discussions right now, um, that's uh, trending on threads is, uh, how Mark Cuban is a better billionaire than uh elon musk oh my gosh no <laughs> and i'm like bro <laughs> what like i get that mark cuban has done uh you know the the stuff with prescription meds I, I i applaud that but here you have a dude that's on a completely different level of doing stuff with his money like you know it, it's crazy and then people bashing musk uh for inheriting his money and oh my gosh he's done good with it like here, here's <laughs> like the that's difference. What, that's what crazy. That's what here's the difference between my, uh, there's a lot. I consider Musk to be a man that pursues um, his moral compass, and I'm not saying that it's right in every case, but he will unabashedly say what he believes should be said, whether that's uh, you know talking about uh, transgendered legislation that is that allows for kids to get sex change surgeries without parents' consent. He's like, this is wrong. It shouldn't be happening. And he's like, hey, I'm for free speech, and I'm for free speech so much. I'm going to spend my own money to ensure that it could stay on social media. Mark Cuban is a bootlicker. Like, for that sure. dude will do say whatever he has to say to get in a position to have more influence. He wants to be the SEC chairman under Harris. So that's why he's attacking Musk is because right. he's licking Harris's boots right now. Yeah. I don't get that. Yeah, he's looking for a political run. Yeah, what idiot. He's he's a goober. Yeah. I don't get so anyway, I don't I don't get it. I don't I, I just I don't get because uh, I'm again, I'm just not a, a real emotional type person. So I, so I don't get voting based on emotion uh, just because you don't like uh, what somebody says or how they say it. 
but you, you so you can't look at the actions you just look at uh, what what's said and you get you feel a certain way about it and then that's how you're gonna yeah trend your vote and then of course you then you got all of the the democrats appealing to that emotional side because um, they know exactly how to poke Okay, and I think you need to get off threads. You're going to get and blood logic just <laughs> logic just isn't as fun as trying to get people uh, fired up emotionally. That's that's what yeah, that's what most social media is to do anyway. All right, we have a top three for today. Yes, we have the top three favorite books of the Bible. Yeah, our our favorite, you know, top three books of the Bible. But we're not saying that we can't say it like that because it's as if the there are. 63 other books that are inferior to these three they're all well they're all fantastic yeah yeah and they all should be read yeah and they all point to jesus in this crazy only god can do kind of a way right so yeah so i'll go uh number three proverbs um and it's just got so much common sense, logic, wisdom in that book. There has never been a time where I have read a proverb or through proverbs and thought, man, I, I don't know how I'm going to use that. Like it's, it's really good stuff. It really also as a parent, um, as you're raising kids, like there's some very rich how to's in here that you could just regurgitate yes, and know that, you're speaking God's truth and wisdom about real world scenarios. Um, you know, holding your tongue and not speaking when out of anger, things like that, hundred percent biblical and lean into them. Um, so anyway, that's my number three, number two Colossians, uh, as far as the new Testament letters go, um, it's, it, this one was really important to me in college. Uh, it's it's a short letter, but it also has some really good things about how you should live, um, not just what you should live for, but how you should do it. And then number number one uh, would be the book of uh, Romans. And I think uh, from stem to stern, Matt being a Navy guy from the Department of the Navy. Department of the Navy. Um, I kind of know what those mean. From, uh, you know, beginning to end – the book of Romans does a fantastic job of just explaining everything, uh, who Jesus is, what Jesus did, why he had to do it, what sin is, what sin causes, um, and, and, it, and how, how to have a relationship with Christ. Um, it's just, uh, it's a fantastic book. And I know, um, there are a lot of people that, you know, are just getting new into Christianity and the advice is, go read John, the gospel of John, because that explains who Jesus is. If you happen to be somebody that's been a part of the church or raised in the church and you already know who Jesus is, but you haven't really just sold out, I would recommend you go read the book of Romans. Um, that I think does a whole lot of um, like the, the reality of why Jesus came and what he was able to do uh, to pay for our sins not just the story of it, but like the application of it, I think is, is fantastic. So, and that's, that's my favorite one. And, um, I do have a good word later and you have heard me talk on this podcast before, but my favorite chapter in all of the Bible is in Romans as well. And that's, that's where our good word will come out of later. Matt, what do you got? Number three, Genesis. That's a good one. The creation account. And, uh, Again, we had uh, in our little text stream that you have muted, Troy, because Chet what? and I get involved in a lot of uh, yeah long-winded that, discussions. That's things I don't get. Why Troy mutes y'all? You got to turn it back on at I some point. I do eventually. Like when I get in bed at night, I'll go, oh, what are these idiots been talking about all day? Oh, all right. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you're missing out. Not all the time. I'm sure I am. Like Sometimes. today, it was like, bzz, 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 and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm trying to get work done. I'll see y'all later." But that was it. Was important stuff about today, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know. We argued a little bit about you going into theater. Uh, yeah, we but were, anyway. oh, I did catch up and read that. Yeah. Oh, but I was sending you Facebook messages too. That was probably blowing you up. Yeah, it was. Yeah. 
Because okay. you're getting the so we've kind of so just so everybody knows we've kind of switched to we'll we'll send stuff on Messenger just because we know that Troy will get it. Yeah, and we know that it will I annoy can mute, him. I can mute those too, though. But then you don't know yeah. which one, and so we just keep you going, right? Flip flopping back and forth. Anyway, I'm sorry. so so uh, long long kind story to get to this point was yeah. uh, uh, I I really enjoy the Book of Genesis, just you know, and of course everything uh, points to Jesus, uh, but. Uh, uh, this one was really interesting to me is because I, I I really like um, science and then I, I really like um, astronomy and figuring out, uh, you know, the the creation of, of the earth. And of course, we have the creation account uh, in the Bible, which is you know 100 percent true. It, but the further that we get into science and the more we learn um, uh, about the universe, the more it, it solidifies and points back to that. So it's it's not like science is getting further away from it because everybody always thinks that science yeah. and, and religion oppose each other. And I was like, no, you have the original account here. This is where it starts. They gave you. They just didn't tell you how. And so now you're figuring out how yeah. it makes sense and how God put those uh, restrictions in physics in place to make everything happen. It's just so genius that it Did blows you, my mind every time I, I read it. And it's like almost too much for my human mind to. to Did you uh, do you see that thing on uh, Amazon? The documentary where they and they talk to scientific scholars in several different disciplines like paleontology, ast astronomy, astronomy, um, astrology is the crazy, right? Yeah, astrology is like the yeah astronomy, and um, there was a so they did the fossil record, they did space, they did anyway. It's a dude going and interviewing folks, and they're like on sites of certain you know events and whatever else. And they're they're showing scientifically how Genesis showed how this would happen. I mean, it was yeah, it was really cool. Well, it was so weird because again, I like uh, and, and astrophysics, and so there's a there's a, a guy um, that's an astrophysicist that's a believer, and his uh, research led him. Oh, Rogan, Rogan had that guy on. Uh, Hugh uh, Hugh Ross. Is oh no, name. I'm thinking so, of a Brian something. Yeah, so Hugh Ross, he was a he was not a believer. Um, he raised in Canada, whatever, but his research in astrophysics led him to Christ. Yeah. Because he's like, there beyond a shadow of a doubt, he goes, Everything that I'm reading here is what I'm proving right. as I'm doing my research. Um, and then I was watching some of his stuff that he was doing on theory of relativity and then how, you know, the you, you know, the Bible's like a thousand years is like a day, a day is like a thousand years, and then Einstein's theory of relativity and that's when I text you and yeah. you're like, well, who cares? You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm right. Like, yeah. But it's like blowing my mind that it's like, this is exactly. He tried to get me fired up and I was just like, Pff, it was so, it was so good. Um, but, uh, so anyway, I like, I like, uh, the creation account. Um, and of course Adam and Eve, and then all of the uh, generations and how well that's documented. Not Adam and Steve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so that, uh, Genesis number three, uh, number two, Luke, um, the birth story. Uh, Savior coming um, in in flesh. Yeah, that's a great and the Christmas story. The Christmas story, but uh, yeah. I mean, it's the salvation story, really. Right. And uh, it's always it's always fun to read that, and then uh, you know, kind of going back uh, a, a little, you know, to be, to the beginning of of Luke, where you've got uh, you know Jesus is a kid, and then he's you know growing up, and you know Jesus is a child, and having the the, the accounts of that and just, it, it's cool because you don't have that many chapters where Jesus is here. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and then the uh, uh, number one uh, would be Revelation, uh, because then that's the that's the end, and it's all it's coming at some point, whether we die physically now before yeah. Jesus comes back. I hope I'm here when he does, just because uh, man, you know. Yeah. How awesome is that going to be, right? Of course, the dead in Christ will rise. Yeah. You know, but how cool would it be to see all of that take place in front of you as you're mm -hmm. over here? So. At the midnight cry. Can we sing it for you? Oh. Okay. I feel like Luke and uh, Acts are one big book. Yeah. The same author. So, yeah. I feel like they, they just flow right into one another. Um. Man, this was hard. I don't know. Uh, number three. Now, now one out of one out it, of sixty six, man. I know. It, it kind of it kind of depends on on where you're at. You could pull a good it, one, honestly, like Zephaniah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I can't even tell you if I've read all the prophets, honestly. Yeah. Um, no, I, number three, I was going to say John, uh, for the, for the reason that it's, it's the easiest gospel to read, Yeah, I believe. And it's the most, uh, under the way you can understand who Jesus was and what he did for us. So mm-hmm. John would be number three for me. Uh, number two for me was Proverbs because of what you touched on Chet. It's Wisdom. Just knowledge, man. The knowledge that uh, Solomon asked for it and God <laughs> gave him every bit of it. And uh, he was blessed with that and wrote it all down for Still us. Still to this day, smartest man that ever lived. Okay, yeah. I would, I would like tend it's been, to agree it's been, with that. Yeah, It's like been researched that he was intellectually like they've kind of guessed what his IQ would be and yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so be careful what you ask for, right? Uh, and then uh, number one for me is Exodus. I love the story of Moses and the Exodus uh, uh, from Egypt and I actually did the Bible study fellowship uh, one year when they did the story of Moses. So you go through Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And uh, yeah, Do it's you just. Move a, on to Joshua and Judges? Or? No, no, it's just the life of Moses. Moses. Yeah, just Moses. But it's a super deep dive into uh, the life of Moses and, and what it all meant. It was really cool. Uh, yeah. I learned a lot and it made Exodus one of my favorite books. So yeah, if you ever Bible study fellowship, you don't know what that is. They're, uh, they're in a lot of cities. Uh, they're led by uh, people in the community that are, you know, sometimes they're not even a pastor or whatever in a church. Yeah, yeah. They might be, you know, a business leader <laughs> or a business owner or, or somebody that just works, but that's, you know, got a gift of teaching and uh uh preaches and teaches at a bible study fellowship i did uh i I did a semester back in uh, when i lived in louisiana yeah that's when i did it it was uh oh man 2009 or 10 yeah yeah so yep that's it all right Chet, you got a good word for us? I've got a good word. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read uh, the first eight verses here. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, And for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. I'll go ahead and give the nice verse in 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Um, That's just a great... Why Jesus came is because we have the flesh. We first have the law, and in your flesh, sinful nature if you obey obey the law you could become righteous but it says here that you couldn't obey the law because the flesh is weak and therefore um, god did what the law couldn't do through jesus coming and sacrificing himself for himself for the sins that we committed and then if we walk by the spirit live by the spirit we're in communion with god and we'll spend eternity with God. If you live according to the flesh, that is death. Um, just a clear description of what human nature is without God and then what following God does for you. Life and peace. So, there you go. 
Good word. Romans. Good book. All right, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.